Hello, my name is Shannon Anderson. I am the curator uh, for the Art Gallery of Mississauga, and this is the Further Apart Things Seam. It is an exhibition that was co-curated by myself and Jay Wilson. It's a touring group exhibition, and it looks at ideas of bringing different kinds of materials together and as a way of exploring the spaces between things that you don't think would maybe work together. as sort of a response to the current social climate and the way that we tend to see things in opposition and us and them and look at everything seems so divisive. And this is sort of a response to that in, in embracing contradiction as a fruitful space for material exploration and experimentation in art. When you first enter the exhibition, you'll encounter the work of Adriana Kuyper and Ryan Souter, two artists who are based in Sackville, New Brunswick. Their work brings together homemade quilts, uh, quilts developed by the artists that incorporate references to sound production, such as megaphones and speakers and sound baffling equipment. So the work is really looking at the relationship between speaking and being silenced or wanting to speak out and not being able to, and that tension uh, between those two sensations. The first gallery in the exhibition is also shared with work by Cousine Van Hoevelen, who is an Indigenous artist living in Bowmanville, Ontario. His work really brings together a blend or a hybrid of Western traditions and Inuit traditions. A lot of his work in this exhibition references travel, mobility, specific to Inuit issues in terms of food scarcity. You'll see the humatik, which is a traditionally a sled that's made out of shipping pallets and also on top is a box of arctic char steaks that are formed out of styrofoam material. So just referencing that idea of modern day shipping and packaging in a situation where normally these practices are traditionally built on sustainability and how those traditions have been replaced over time by western modes of travel and transit. This is the work of Atnis Bozdorov. Atnis is a Toronto-based artist who has a physical disability in which he needs to use a cane and braces in order to move through the world. And this work really references um, those barriers to access that he experiences on a daily basis. Uh, the ramps that he constructs are not meant to be functional. There's a lot of humor in Atmos's work as well. Um, these are all ramps that if you actually were to step on them would collapse completely. And he's paired those with images of actual accessibility ramps that you see that he's encountered throughout various cities. Uh, again, even though these are, these are ramps that were made and installed to be used by the public, most of the images that you'll see uh, reference ramps that are actually not functional and in fact can be hazardous to people who are trying to use them. In this small gallery there's a combination of Atnes's ramp photos and also um, a display of some of his cane tips. Uh, those are uh, cast made and actual cane tips uh, that the artist has to constantly replace and repair uh, through repetitive use. And you can also hear in the gallery a, piece, a sound piece called cane clicks, which is the sound that his cane makes uh, through the space every day. And uh, as an individual, it becomes part of his identity, that sound that he makes uh, as he's trying to navigate the world. And his work is really interested in exploring uh, failures of access and pointing attention to things that people who are fully mobile don't have to encounter on a daily basis. This body of work is by Brendan Lee Sadish Tang, who is a Vancouver-based artist. And this work was actually developed in response to an exhibition that he was invited to show at the Surrey Art Gallery, which is in BC, uh, and which was the town where Brendan grew up. And this work is particularly meaningful for him because it references his own adolescence experiences uh, as trying to grow up in a small town as a Chinese Canadian kid, as a teenager who wasn't embraced by the youth culture of, of where he lived. Um, so you see a, a replica of a Ford F-150 truck and as well as the other sort of symbols of that childhood experience, uh, beer bottles, trucker hats, and he's modeled these out of paper uh, as a reference to uh, ancestral Chinese tradition uh, called joss paper, where you create objects out of paper, replicas of things that you then burn as an offering to the ancestors. Uh, it's also a reference to this new age 
tradition of writing down your grievances and burning them to let them go. So the work is really, in, his work is really interested in examining his own childhood and his experiences of not being able to access the youth culture around him and his ambivalence around that experience. Um, you know, feeling regret around not being, uh, you know, not having access to the culture around him, but also not really wanting to embrace what he calls a toxic masculinity in that culture. So it's really a push and pull experience. So you'll see in the work that none of the pieces, um, they may all reference burning, but none of the pieces are fully burnt. The trucker hats and the beer bottles are partially burned and the truck uh, has lights underneath that make it look like it's on fire but he's really only partially burning these objects to reference the fact that he can't really fully reconcile his feelings around these experiences. Anna Benta Diallo is a Senegalese Canadian artist who was born in St. Boniface, Manitoba, resided in, in Montreal, moved back to Winnipeg. Uh, so she's really exploring those ele various elements of her identity in her work. Uh, what she calls sort of a cultural mashup that she lives with and experiences and, and her work is collage based bringing together all kinds of different imagery that references her own past, her own uh, personal memories, diasporic experiences, uh, broader cultural and political issues all brought together within these silhouettes of various figures. This body of work uh, was made by Barbara Hobot, a Kitchener, Ontario based artist. Barbara's, uh, her work has been very invested in looking at the idea of the nets uh, through alchemy and through abstract explorations. But this body of work uh, took her to Chile where she had a research grant to look at fog catching nets. Um, and those were produced, very sort of provisional uh, netting that stretches out uh, in order to collect water through fog that is produced in the region and it's a way of uh, compensating for water scarcity in the area that's happened through the practice of copper mining. So she's bringing together these ideas of uh, provisionality and resistance uh, as a way of a community trying to compensate for uh, an environmental issue that's been occurring in the region. The Art Gallery of Mississauga is a public contemporary art gallery. We are free and open to the public six days a week. We invite you to come by and experience our changing exhibitions, which turn over about every two months, or participate in one of our free workshops.